Hi, everybody. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone, for coming, rallying after lunch. Um, I'm Marty, and I make maps to connect people with conservation issues. And this is my fifth NASIS. Uh, my talk is going to be a little different than advertised in the abstract, uh, just because May was a long time ago. Uh, and so today I'm going to share with you a cartographic dispute currently going on in the halls of Congress and soon in a federal courtroom. Sometimes people lie with maps, sometimes in ways that really matter. And when that happens, it is up to us as cartographers to set the record straight. And so this is a story of my humble efforts to enter the fray and do just that. Uh, so this photo is um, of the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska. And there's a debate going on in our country right now over whether to open it up to oil and gas drilling. And one of the biggest disagreements turns out, in fact, to be a cartographic one. So I'm going to show you some disinformative maps and a map that I made to try to set the record straight. And I'll share a few takeaways from uh, my experience using Natural Scene Designer for the first time for this process. And I'll close by showing um, the map in action on the house floor last month. So a quick intro to the refuge. Uh, here it is in northeastern Alaska. And when we, when we talk about what's at stake here, we're talking about the traditional livelihoods and cultures of the indigenous peoples who have lived off the land and caribou there for thousands of years and who already face pretty severe food security issues. And we're talking about wildlife like the porcupine caribou herd who give birth to their calves every summer in exactly the place where development would happen. Um, and of course, we're also talking about our climate. And nowhere is changing faster right now than the Arctic. And the irony of going there to suck more oil out of the ground is not lost on anyone who lives there. So what's the cartographic dispute? The 2017 tax law stipulates that oil development in the coastal plain of the refuge must be limited to a 2,000 acre footprint. That's about three square miles, which doesn't sound like a lot. But what actually counts towards that limit, as well as how those 2,000 acres are spread out, um, makes a huge difference in the impact on migrating caribou and subsistence hunting. So proponents of drilling like to show this footprint as being all together in one square. They like to say that it would be like a postage stamp on a football field, or less than the size of Dulles Airport in a landscape the size of South Carolina. This map was made by the Senate Republican Policy Committee, and there are other versions as well. Uh, here's Senator Murkowski with one where the dot is so small that you actually can't see it in this kind of blurry photo. And that's kind of the thing that all these maps have in common, that a tiny 2,000 acre square that people always have a hard time seeing, and then they say, that's the point. And these disinformative maps have led many to believe that, that development would be constrained to a very small portion of the coastal plain. Now, being cartographic experts and uh, well-trained in how people lie with maps. Uh, many of you may already know what's wrong with this picture. What's wrong with it is that a 2,000 acre footprint doesn't mean that those 2,000 acres will all be in one spot. In fact, if you look at how oil development actually takes place on the North Slope, it doesn't take an industry expert to see that facilities are not confined to one spot and that drilling would instead require a web of facilities connected by roads and pipelines across hundreds of miles. Uh, this is that same place with the boundary of DC for scale. So we set out to visually depict how 2,000 acres of oil development would actually realistically be configured in this place. 
I started by creating this bird's eye view of the coastal plain as it is now, uh, without development, looking south from the Arctic Ocean. And the, the red boundary there um, delineates the program area where, where development could take place. Just go a little closer here. So I did the rendering in Natural Scene Designer and then added to it in Photoshop. It was my first time using Natural Scene Designer and it was one of those things where I had a really short window of time to do this project and so naturally I decided it was the right time to learn a new tool. <laughs> Uh, the audience I had in mind for this map was a federal judge and his or her clerks down the line when this goes to court. And so even though we aren't going to court quite yet, um, we had to submit materials into the record this past March in order to guarantee that they'll be admissible in the courtroom. I had never made a map for a judge before, and I don't know any judges. Uh, but after talking with the lawyers on my team, I knew that I could reasonably make a few assumptions. So. They don't have technical uh, expertise in oil and gas. Uh, they're deeply invested in understanding the nuance of the issue. Um, and they have thousands of pages of material to go through, so they don't have a lot of time. So I worked with a, a team of engineers who are experts in North Slope oil development to come up with this depiction of how development would likely be configured uh, under the 2,000 acre limit, um, given what's known about where oil deposits are located, and also based on state-of-the-art drilling technology. And as you can see, the postage stamp analogy doesn't really work. And yet all of this, and actually more, uh, is possible within that 2,000 acre footprint. And what people don't realize when they hear 2,000 acres is that 100 miles of road only covers 750 acres. And 100 miles of pipeline only covers four acres. But they create a 100 mile long scar on the landscape and a 100 mile long barrier to migrating caribou who come here every summer to calve. Two different herds actually, the orange and the pink. And they overlap in the spot where there's the most oil. So, I'm pretty late to the party on Natural Scene Designer, and um, there are a lot of people here at NASIS who know way, way more about it, including Joe. <laughs> um, that's, I'm glad I'm going before him. Uh, <laughs> but I'll just share a few things from my first experience. It runs off a of CD-ROM every time you use it. <laughs> so I bought this CD drive. It is awesome at things like texture shading and rendering bird's eye views. Um, it does a whole lot more than that, but those are the things that I've used it for and it's been great. Some drawbacks are, um, it, in my experience, has really struggled with large files and I, I learned this kind of once it was too late to turn back. Um, and if you're, if you're used to something like Photoshop, you'll, you'll find the options for creating custom objects and layers um, pretty limiting, but that's not really my sense is that that's not what it's trying to be good at. So something that worked really well for me was to have NSD export those additional layers as SVGs, and then I could bring those into my Adobe workflow really easily. So here's what that looks like for that program area boundary on the map. So this hasn't gone before a judge yet, but the House Democrats have been using it in hearings and debates over the last six months. And so now I'm gonna see if, I, if, if I've got good AV karma, and I'm gonna show you a video with sound. Um, so if this works, uh, I'm gonna show you the, the two maps going head to head on the House floor a month ago. This was in, a, in the debate leading up to a vote on a bipartisan bill that would restore protections to the refuge. Um, is anyone here from Alaska? All right, or uh, California's second district? It's like the whole North Coast. Okay, sweet. Well, these are your reps. Just keep in mind, we're talking about an area of a 19 million acre refuge. 
and areas left aside, the 10 or 2 area, that map behind me, if anybody can see that little tiny red dot, 2,000 acres, less than the size of Dulles Airport, less than the size of the Capitol grounds. So I'm suggesting respect for this bill should not go anywhere. It may, may pass today because there's a lot of people on that side don't believe in oil. I understand that. But it's wrong to undo what Congress has done. And now I will suggest respectfully it's dead. You're wasting our time. It will not go anywhere. That's why I'm not going to get really excited and go there. Never mind. And I would suggest respectfully I'm going to see the death of this bill long, long time before this gentleman's ever in this house again. And I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Alaska reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. Well, I thank the gentleman for his restraint. Um, <laughs> one, one of the arguments my friend from Alaska uh, invariably makes when we talk about this issue is that the proposed drilling area is just a tiny little piece of a great big refuge in a great big state. And uh, it's typically characterized as just a little 2,000 acre postage stamp. Uh, we need to dispel this very inaccurate and disingenuous characterization. It may be 2,000 acres of hard footprint, but it's not 2,000 acres of development all in one place. It is spread out across the coastal plain, which is the beating heart of America's largest wildlife refuge. And if you want to see what this footprint really looks like, it's not so tiny, folks. When you look at the hundreds of miles of roads, and the gravel mining and the gravel pads and the oil rigs and other infrastructure that have to go in, uh, it, it looks a lot differently than what has been characterized. So this picture depicts what the true footprint of this little postage stamp development in the Arctic Refuge looks like. And I think by any fair measure, it would absolutely despoil the beating heart of America's largest wildlife refuge. With that, I'd like to yield <laughs> so that day the house voted 225 to 193 to restore protections to the refuge uh well let me finish <laughs> it's currently in committee in the senate <laughs> where it's probably not going to go anywhere um, and meanwhile, the first oil and gas lease sale in the refuge is scheduled to happen in a little over a month. So that's where we are. And um, maps are powerful. <laughs> we all know that. And maps that mislead are often especially powerful. We need more cartographic talent in advocacy, specifically I would love some more help. <laughs> and I'm always impressed at NASIS to see how many people um, in this community are putting their talents to, to work for a cause that they really care about. It's awesome. And we're about to hear from five more speakers who are doing just that. And it's a, it's a lineup that I feel honored to be a part of. So, so thank you all. Um, I also I also want to thank my uh, my awesome core team on this project, um, Lois, Allison, and Tim. It's probably not that often that um, an engineer, a lawyer, an ecologist, and a cartographer come together to work on a map, uh, but it's really fun. And for one last thing, if you live in New York, D.C., or San Francisco, our Arctic Refuge immersive, multi-sensory, interactive exhibit is coming soon to your city. So check out these dates and uh, there will be more information at arcticrefugeexperience.com. I think we bought that domain yesterday and I am not really sure if there's much on it right now, but um, you can also get half price tickets, just $5, if you use the promo co code Arctic Ally. So cool, thanks for your time. Oh yeah, I'll take questions. Which one? Oh, yeah. Can you also give a plug for everyone on the Patagonia film, the Gwich'in tribe? Yeah, so I, I was thinking about including that. Um, so there's, we produced a film with Patagonia uh, 
or last winter called Welcome to Guichage, um, about It's a film about the Guichin community that um, is doing a lot right now to, to fight this. And we're trying to have their backs as much as possible. Um, there's a little animated map in there that I made. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, but yeah, you can watch it online. Um, I can get in touch if you can't find it. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much.